Hi, it's Katie Kovalvik here, and today I'm gonna to be going over how I rebuilt my body after partially tearing my MCL and ACL, having two herniated discs, and having severe whiplash and a concussion. And this happened about 10 years ago. I was in two consecutive accidents uh, back to back within about a three month period, and really struggled with a lot of severe body issues. And things that happened to me is I was diagnosed with PTSD. I had so much anxiety after, after my accidents. And then I actually gained a lot of weight. I had about 30 more pounds on my frame and I'm a pretty petite little person. So it was a lot of weight for me. And then also just dealt with years of chronic pain and really having a lot of issues with my digestion. I was diagnosed with IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. And basically I was like almost scared to eat because Every single time I ate, I would get bloated and have gas and just have a lot of pain. And I had a lot of other issues. It was just like this perfect storm. And so what, what did I do to really get on top of this and get to that next level of healing and to really be able to integrate and to move on? And so I'm just gonna go over a few things today. There's a lot more here, but just some high level things that you can think about too, especially if you're dealing with chronic pain or disease state or just having like issues in your life. It's, it's something we have to have strategies around that. And um, so the first thing, the first tip that I would give you is to really look at mindset. And what are your strategies around mindset? And so what I mean here is what are your belief systems and values and you know, are you in a uh, reactive mode when things happen? Are you triggered easily? Are you dealing with a lot of emotional baggage? This will really prevent you from really healing. And to me, this is really important to get on top of. And this is what I work on with anyone um, that comes to me as a client. And then I'm working on myself constantly. Like, what are these strategies? Especially looking like high performance strategies. You know, because if we don't work on mindset, we'll just get stuck in the vicious cycle. And, you know, one bad thing will happen, and then the next thing, and the next thing, and we can't get on top of it. We can't move away from it. And there's definitely strategies and skill set to get on top of mindset so that you can work with your mind versus against it. So what are a few of these tips that I learned from rebuilding my body? The first tip is that you have to work on mindset. This is so important and something that a lot of times we'll bypass and we'll just be caught, I call it the vicious cycle, and we'll be looping and, and just going over and over things and actually being this negative triggered mindset. And so we really have to learn strategies on uh, being able to get on top of that and to release you know, emotional baggage. Um, I know for me, I experienced a lot of anger and sadness and fear and even shame and guilt around being injured and really having to deal with my disease state and having all these issues. And so I had to learn these strategies on how to focus in and, and to be able to move forward and have these step-by-step -step strategies so that I'm able to get on top of things and not be distracted or be taken off my path. And so there's a lot here, but that is the most important thing to start with is that we have to have the correct mindset and have the belief systems and our values, everything being supported to move forward to healing. And, and so that we're not um, getting triggered or we're getting into these negative things. And so this is really important. Uh, tip number two is uh, the relationship you have to your disease state or pain. This was a huge shift for me. I was super reactive whenever I was in pain. Uh, most of the time I was either like a seven, eight or nine on a scale to one to 10. And I just, I let it control my life. And I remember realizing this. I remember that I could breathe and I could uh, respond versus react to it and start working with the pain versus against it. Because the more anger I had and the more frustration and, and whatever that was, the more pain I would have because it would create more tension and constriction in the body and we really want to create flow and this dilation in the body. So this was really, really big to, to shift that relationship with the pain. And I go through so many strategies on my website and then on, in my online programs and whenever I'm working with someone because this is, this is really, really important. Uh, a thing within this, I guess, with working uh, with a relationship with pain is breath management. So part of my journey of um, getting over my PTSD was taking three years of voice work because I, case, I basically couldn't talk in front of anyone. I had such bad anxiety that I would shut down and I had such a bad brain fog and memory issues. It's like I couldn't function and I couldn't speak in front of people. And so I took three years of voice work and big part of voice work and just learning, you know, meditation and 
to slow everything down was learning how to breathe properly. I, especially I was in so much trauma and so much anxiety, I was actually breathing so much from my chest and my throat. And this was really not helping my pain and my nervous system and my 11 systems of the body. So I really learned techniques of how to bring the breath down into the belly and to have what I call a 360 degree breath and to really um, breathe into our lungs that are in our back and to also elongate the exhale. This is really, really important, especially if you're dealing with chronic pain because this helps uh, stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system, which calms us down. And so just really learning, you know, if things are, ha you know, looking at what you have control over and when you, you know, break it down, you have control over your breath. Like what are your choices every single moment? Are you gonna respond or react? And then how are you breathing? So you have to start breaking down to the small things. Another thing here, talking about small things, is you got to celebrate the small stuff. This was really a huge shift in me uh, as well in my healing journey, was that I, um, part of my issue was I was constantly comparing myself to how I was before, or I was comparing myself to other people. And I remember when I started shifting this and I started taking one day at a time and just checking in, you know, where am I today? And then I remember also the day that I walked one block without pain. And that night, instead of being hard on myself, I was like, oh, that was really good. I'm gonna do two blocks by next week. And I started, again, just being more of a cheerleader to myself versus being hard on myself or comparing and to really start celebrating those small things. Another thing too here, I mean, these are things you've heard as well, but, and this is something I go into a lot of detail because it, again, really shifted things was looking at um, diet, so having an anti-inflammatory diet, and then non-impact fitness. And so within diet, uh, a lot of times people don't realize that stress and pain, when you're in pain, you, you, your body, it's, a lot of, it's very stressful, and this causes inflammation. Also, you know, when our blood sugar is up and down and we're eating foods that are very refined and toxic and um, pollutants and things like that, are, we're all over the place and this causes inflammation. And so we gotta really work with the body versus against it. And so really learning what it is to have an anti-inflammatory diet and seeing if you have certain things like sensitivities or allergies, and that can be like gluten, dairy, nuts, soy, eggs. I mean, those are just common things. Um, but there's so much more here and it's something that I go into detail and I think it's it's so important because I was such a sugaraholic beforehand and I was eating all these foods that were not helping my mood and really putting me out of balance. And then non-impact fitness. So I really got into like things like Tai Chi and Qigong and yoga and walking and just really, you know, being able to build. Like what are those beginning steps? You know, not going right into these crazy workouts or thinking that you have to, to be like that if you're, you know, overnight. What are these beginning steps? And even if I had a flare up, I knew the strategies where I'd have to go to start building to get to get going. And so I wasn't just in that spot for a long time. Um, some other things is just advanced body work. And so, you know, finding people that know how to release the fascia and the tension in the body, because when we have pain in the body or we're dealing with disease states, the, the fascia and the tissues, it, it does these holding patterns and you clench. And so it's almost like a spiral. And so it's learning kind of how to unravel from that. And just overall, it's looking at strategies. Like you've got to learn strategies that work for you and you've got to master them. And so for me, it's like, whatever happens, I know how to handle it. Cause I don't think, you know, it's one of those things, I'm not in that mindset that everything's going to always be perfect in life and that I've reached, I'm there and things are going to be easy. It's like things happen all the time. It's just, I have a choice on how I want to handle it. And if I'm going to respond versus react and then, start taking action and doing strategy little things to resolve it and, and to learn from it and just move on from it. So these are just a few things and there's so much more here and I'm sure I'll make more uh, videos about this, but I wanna hear your comments, so leave a comment below. And if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video, bye for now.